1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today's gospel is the Annunciation, and the Mass is being offered for Carol Webb. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, your Word made flesh and Splendor of the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Carl Webb. O God, eternal majesty, whose ineffable word the Immaculate Virgin received to the message of an angel, and so became the dwelling place in the, of divinity, filled with the light of the Holy Spirit, grant, we pray, that by her example we may in humility hold fast to your will, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld or high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary men? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Yes. Our responsorial psalm is from the 24th psalm. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of Glory. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. The Lord is the King of Glory. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. <clears throat> he shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Let the Lord enter. He is the King of glory. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O key of David, opening the waters, opening the gates of God's eternal kingdom, come and free the prisons of darkness. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. 
And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. When she was greatly troubled at what was said, and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with the man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. For whom was Luke writing his Gospel? No, a particular man, and I'm sure he had us in mind too. Theophilus, most excellent Theophilus, and he decided to investigate and renew the accounts of Jesus Christ. So he went to the eyewitnesses. He went to Paul and Peter and Mary. We get a lot of details in Luke's Gospel that we don't have in, in the others. And Luke presents Mary not just as the mother of Jesus, but more importantly, I think, as the ideal disciple. When the angel came to her, she was greatly troubled. Why would she be troubled? Well, you can only imagine. What's Joseph going to say? She was betrothed to him legally. She was bound to him. Would he accuse her of infidelity? What would the neighbors say? What would the family say? She could, could have been stoned. You know, so you can see why she was deeply troubled. And yet, she knew what it was about. And she said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to word. She is a great disciple and is a model disciple according to St. Luke. Luke presents Mary in a beautiful way. And he presents the incarnation through the eyes of Mary. Matthew gives it through the eyes of Joseph. But Luke very focused on Mary as the ideal disciple. Let us pray. Let us pray that like Mary, we can do God's will. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all Christians to honor Mary and call her blessed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Carol Webb, for whom the Mass has been offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So many people have asked for prayers. Every day I get emails and texts and phone calls, people requesting prayers. So we lift up in prayer all those most in need of God's help. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we need God's help to finish our new church so that the bishop can come and say Mass there Christmas Eve. So we pray it'll all work out. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we need always disciples like Mary. So we pray that every parishioner at Most Holy Trinity will model themselves after Mary and become intentional disciples. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For cures for cancer, Parkinson's, kidney disease, Crohn's disease, Alzheimer's, the coronavirus, and other catastrophic illnesses, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank God for this day. We thank God for these beautiful readings. May we allow Jesus to come into our hearts. May we live in his love each day through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual trip. Bless be God for us.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice to your hands for the praise and glory of the name, for our good and good of all the soldiers. Look, O Lord, we pray upon the one sacrifice of your Son, that by participating in this mystery, we may possess at last the gifts we have awaited, and for which our faith bids us to hope, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Yes. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles that the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in my eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in my eyes. Two little quotes from Pope St. Pius X. The devotion to the Eucharist is the most noble because it has God as its object. It is the most profitable for salvation because it gives us the author of grace. It is the sweetest because the Lord is sweetness itself. Holy Communion is the shortest and safest way to heaven. There are others, but the shortest way to heaven is the Holy Eucharist. You're indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have yes. set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Be sorry. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not that worthy, that you should have done my way. But I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are in, or present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant divine protection, O Lord, to those you renew with this heavenly gift, that to those who delight in your mysteries, you may give the joy of true peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for Ashley. Good morning. Good morning. So in our first reading today, the first time that I went over it, I thought it was short, sweet, and to the point. It's given the sign of Mary, who is going to give birth to Jesus, the Savior of the world. But the more I read it, is the more depth that I started to see within this reading. In the beginning of it, we see that, uh, I'm sorry, that Ahaz says that he will not tempt the Lord by asking for what, he, what he's wanting. And they say, is it not bad enough that you weary yourself, but now you also weary God? This kind of had me thinking, and I was like, what? What exactly does he mean by, by saying this? And after reflecting on it, I started to realize that God is at the depth of our heart. God's also at the depth of our soul. God knows what we want long before we even know what we want. And there's no complications when it comes to God. He's not swaying or you know, going back and forth. He, God is God and will always be God. If we think about it, it's we are the ones that complicate things. We may want something with our heart, but then we tell ourselves with our head that we don't want it, or maybe we're not worthy, or you know anything negative. We are led by regret, um, disappointments, missed opportunities, and and things such as this, and we let them define us rather than rather than overcoming the things in life. And we're the ones that cause the disconnect between God with these things. So it made me think a lot on just how much more simple we could make life and we could make the world. So my challenge for you this week is to pay attention to how you talk to yourself and pay attention to the things that you think about yourself, the things that nobody else hears and the things that nobody else can see on the outside world. Because I think before we start to treat others the way that we want to be treated, we need to first learn to love, respect, and treat ourselves with dignity. Thank you. Very good, Ashley. Got a cute Christmas joke here. A guy bought his wife a beautiful diamond ring for Christmas. After hearing about this extravagant gift, a friend of his said, I thought she wanted one of those sporty four-wheel drive vehicles. She did, he replied. But where am I going to find a fake Jeep? <laughs> <laughs> the 
The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks. Let's pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill our hearts with your faithful. And kindle us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and we shall be prayed. And we shall be prayed. Let's pray, O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit. Grant me by the 